Alright, so now we have a plank. I'm going to start texturing this guy. And the same techniques that I used previously to keep the actual mesh intact, I will be using to um, you know, keep this width uh, looking you know, more or less the same. And then I can use the sculpting brushes. So first of all, let's see what happens if I do the um, divide. We can definitely see it does keep its, its volume for the most part. And uh, if we jump between these two, in fact, that's looking pretty good. And I'll stick with that for now. So I'm not going to turn off the smooth subdivisions function. I'm just going to keep it as is. Control D one more time. Another one. And that should be a good base for me to start, you know, playing with some of the brushes. Uh, for this one, I'm going to roughen up some of the edges and the, the brushes that I'll be using it's going to be the dynamic uh, trim dynamic brushes. I'm going to turn off the wireframe, Shift F, and I'm just going to along the edges of the model, just kind of roughen it up and dent it in. And I'm doing it quite steadily without any, um, without adding too much of the effect um, all at once. And by doing so, we're getting this feeling that the wood is not in a perfect plank, it's been used a bit and make it look natural. I'm not going to do it all over the model, I'm just going to hint at some of the elements at some points just to kind of break it up and give it some variation. And once I have what I think I know I want, I'll then go ahead and maybe subdivide this one more time and just kind of sharpen up at the, some of these corners. We could also use the H polish. There's a soft polish and then there should be a hard polish as well. So if I hit H, uh, it immediately activates the H polish brush. And this one is quite nice because it actually keeps the edges sharp where the transition between these corners happen and that really really adds a lot more you know, sharpness and detail to the corners. Okay let's do a bit more of that over here and once I'm happy with that I'll then jump onto some of the other brushes brushes that I think will help a bit. That's a bit too much over there. And there we go. Happy times. Excellent. So now I'm going to jump in and grab one of these ore brushes. Some of the ore brushes that I've um, downloaded from the internet. You can just look, look it up. So um, in Google just type in orb brushes for ZBrush and you should get a whole list of different brushes. So the one that I'm looking for in particular is going to be maybe one of these raking brushes. That's a good one to kind of carve in certain line detail going across the model. And remember we're doing some sort of a cartoony vibe so I'm gonna emphasize certain details a bit more and we can already see we're losing a lot of detail uh, we're not getting what we're looking for so instead of just keeping it at 14,000 I'm going to subdivide this guy quite a bit more one two three that's almost a million and what this does it's going to help us really carve into this this mesh and help us get the detail that we're looking for There we go. It's a good idea not to hash over it again, otherwise you start getting these kind of star shapes. So rather just try and get the stroke that you want right off the bat. Otherwise just undo and try and repeat that again. If for instance, you're carving into the mesh and you want to enhance the, the strength of it. Let's say I'm doing a very thin line, but I want to carve in deeper on top of the exact same one without needing to go over it twice. You can go into your stroke options 
and the modifiers and then say repeat last and that just repeats the last stroke now this only works if you haven't moved the canvas or switch to a different brush otherwise this technique will just jump to whichever tool or uh, function you use last so just keep that in mind so I'm gonna carve in a little bit more over here and I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of doing something like that which will give us the ability to then kind of create this little knot in the wood and getting some pretty nice looking interesting wood effects right here I can bring my brush size down and try and hash over these lines a little bit more when I have a variation of different thicknesses so that it looks natural and not all perfectly thin I'll carve this out like that maybe a little bit bigger go around that wood dent and go back on itself again there we go that's looking pretty good and once I've done with one of these I will then just kind of leave it there um, and repeat the same process on all the others kind of off screen because I don't think it's necessary for you guys to watch all of them as they happen because they're kind of the same thing over and over again okay so a little bit more over here hash over these guys then gonna go in here and carve along here as well there we go and then on the sides we will repeat the same process I don't want to add too much detail as then it kind of goes away from the cartoony feeling and that's definitely not something that I want okay so just some detail just enough to make it look interesting from all angles one long stroke now if you become if you see that your lines are quite wobbly then it's a good idea to then go to your stroke options and then make sure you turn on lazy mouse by toggling this guy on and then we can increase the lazy smoothness and what this will allow us to do is draw out this long line now we just be very careful that it doesn't create the stepping effect if that's the case then you'll have to go ahead and reduce your stepping and the radius was a bit too long I'm gonna keep it there there we go that's looking much much better maybe a little bit higher say 40 44 that should be good and then I carve this line so now it just averages out the, the mouse itself to keep the, the details more interesting excellent I like that, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna try and hint at some of these a little bit more so it looks more like deeper crevices. And then once I'm, I'm done with those, I'll call this one done. Let's try that a little bit better. trying to make these lines quite long and steady it's always a good idea to try and keep this constant and methodical if you go over these lines too quickly then they become too noisy and they lose their interesting effect okay I think that looks pretty good I'm happy with that piece 
I'm gonna quickly save my scene. I'm gonna hit the quick save button here. And then once I'm done with that, I will start working on the other ones.